Welcome back. This video is a six month check-in from my being with session back in August with Steve Hardison, the ultimate coach. Some of you have asked about that experience with Steve and I wanted to share a little bit about what it looks like and feels like six months post being with. And I also wanted to share a little bit about if you missed my kind of play by play about what that experience is like. I wanted to share a little bit about that with those of you that have asked for that. So kind of going back to last year and thinking about working with Steve, doing a being with session, you know, I shared multiple times that I did not think that this was something that I was going to experience, that this was not an experience that was really appropriate for me, right? Um, some of Steve's clients include, you know, Fortune 50 leaders. And while I do have my own business and run my own business, at the time I sort of thought, well, that's not the kind of coach that, you know, is applicable to me or even that I really want. And I ended up reading the Ultimate Coach book and getting my own coach after um, hearing about the Ultimate Being with experience in London and really getting on the, tra the trajectory of this being with and slowing down to the speed of love, slowing down to my speed, right? and getting clear that this was something I felt compelled to do. And I knew I was gonna make it happen no matter what, right? And when I showed up in Arizona and you know pulled up to Steve's house, there were so many things that unfolded that I'd love to share with you today, but I'm gonna highlight the things that I think are really, really important about that experience and also about where I'm at today. Some of the key things that I noticed are the way that Steve creates both himself and whoever it is that he's talking to. This is so incredibly powerful and he does it in every single moment. He creates himself, he creates others, not as we think we should be, not as we feel we are or as we are limited by our past experiences, our, our mindsets, our thinking. Steve creates himself and others as we inherently are being, as we're born on this planet, as children of the universe, as children of this world, right? Innocent, perfect, powerful, little beings of light and love. That's really all we are. That's why they use that phrase, like bundles of love, little bundles of love, right? Babies are, are born this way. And that's how Steve creates himself and creates others. And there's power and there's momentum. And I felt caught up in this momentum of creation. And I do believe we are in co-creation with the world and with the universe. And what I felt like we were doing is really tapping into that, right? Jumping in the river of co-creation. So that's one of the main things the highlights that I want you to get is that we are always in co-creation, creating ourselves and creating others, creating our relationships and creating our situations. It is critical that you hear this and that you practice this. I now wake up every single morning creating myself and creating my kids, creating my relationships every single morning. And I was doing that actively at first, and now it just happens naturally before I open my eyes, when I'm in that twilight state between sleep and awake, it just happens automatically. I create myself and I create others. And, and sometimes, yes, still it happens that negative thoughts arise, you know, it's raining outside or whatever, right? Or there's something that I don't particularly love doing that I know is gonna come up that day, and I, catch it and I shift and I choose to create myself and I choose to create my day over and over and over. And this is a game changer. Before we went into Steve's office, Steve created his office and the magic that would ultimately happen in his office. And I asked him some questions about well, what, 
what makes your office so special? What makes it magic? And he said, I spoke my office into the space and then my clients started treating it as such. They started reverently removing their shoes and it became this magical place because he created it. He thought it, he felt it, he spoke it into the space. And I wanna say without fear, because that's the th next thing that we're gonna segue into. Without creating fear, right? So many people on the planet fear what could happen, what might happen. And fear, here's what I wanna say about fear. And what I learned then and when where I'm at now is, and also in the past, we were hardwired. We are hardwired to fear because many, many years ago, we had to watch out for saber-toothed tigers, right? To keep us alive on high alert at all times. But that's not the case now. There are no longer saber-toothed tigers. We don't have the same kind of kinds of things that we need to fear. This is both a blessing and it can be a detriment. So what I learned is that fear isn't outside of me. I thought I was going to see Steve because I had a boogeyman under the bed, right? I had one last, you know, obstacle to overcome, something that I feared. And the truth was that I realized there is no boogeyman out there. There's nobody hiding under the bed. Fear doesn't exist outside of me. Fear, it's created here and then projected out into the world. And I'm not saying that there aren't terrible things that happen. But how I relate to them now is completely different. So I don't keep creating that fear. Now think about that exponentially. What if everyone in the world took on this perspective and didn't create fear? How would that impact all those terrible things that are happening out there? If folks just stopped creating fear. You know, so since I've come back, I've been challenged, you know, well, how do you just stop? How do you stop creating fear? That sounds like suppression. And here's the thing, is that we're not talking about suppressing anything that's already arisen, right? Something that's already been created. We're talking about not creating it at all. Just not creating it. So then what do we do with the fear that gets created? I'm going to tell you that's what I've learned and sort of worked with since then, this three-step process, technically four, when you're identifying your fear. What is your fear? What do you deeply fear more than anything? Yeah, that thing, whatever it is that just came up for you, what is the thing that you fear everybody, if anybody around you, your partner, the people in your work environment, your family, what do you most fear they would find out about you? Or even that I would find out about you? or social media people would find out about you. Yeah, it's a little bit like taking your breath away, right? Now that thing, whatever that thing is, get up underneath that. The thing you truly, truly fear above all else. So what do you do with that? You identify it, you find a way to release it, to let it go, and then you stop creating fear. And what happens then? That hole, number three, that hole that's inside of you where fear was, you fill it up with something else. You fill it up with light. You fill it up with love. You take ownership. You become your inherent essence, the way you were meant to be. That's number three. And number four, you jump off the cliff. You do something that you fear. You do something that is aligned with your personal internal commitment. Whatever that is, you take a leap. You commit to taking a leap. You don't have to take the leap today, but you commit to something so powerfully, it becomes a, a part of who you inherently are. And then those little baby steps that work toward it, those will naturally come. But first you commit and then you jump off the cliff. Those are three or four of the landings that I've gotten since I was with Steve Hardison. The steps, the, the game changer, identify the fear, right? S stop creating it when you can. Stop creating it. Identify it if you do create it. 
let it go. Bring in the light. And then create a personal internal commitment to jump off that cliff. Why? Because, like I said about the saber-toothed tiger, we don't we have all of these creature comforts now, right? We live in homes where we don't have really most of us don't have to worry about being warm at night. We don't have to worry about necessarily food in our bellies. So there isn't this consistent pivoting toward fear that even a hundred years ago, you know, let alone a thousand or ten thousand years ago, that we had to exercise, we had to pivot toward, you know, creating things that we feared. We had to face our fears. And now we don't do that. So that muscle isn't exercised very often, right? So when we do this, when we jump off the cliff, when we do this process, it's like you're going to the emotional, psychological, mental, spiritual gym and you're lifting weights. You're building that resilience muscle, that grit muscle when you face your fear, when you jump off the cliff, when you do this process that I just talked about. I'll never forget my youngest daughter. We had a weekly check-in with all the kids, but um, and we talked about what their big rocks are going to be for the week for many, many, many years, because that's you know how we break big projects down or big things that we want to do in our life. We break them into little chunks, weekly chunks, right? And one week, my daughter, she was maybe ten, and she said, you know, I want to add something to our weekly check-in. I want to add our challenge or the thing that we feared that we faced that week, right? And I love this so much. And this is the fifth step to the process that we just talked about. It's talking about it at the end of the week, debriefing, what did you learn? Landing that learning, right? Getting clarity, communicating with your partner, with your kids, with the people that you work with throughout this arc of fear, identifying the fear and going through all the way to jumping off the cliff. What happens? What did you learn? How does that resilience muscle feel now? This is a critical step that we often forget. That's that debrief phase. And what's coming through for me in my life? I'm going to be honest with you. Toward the end of the year, the last month or two was really, really challenging. I had multiple crises happen in my family system. Multiple crises. And one of my friends, very, very close friends said to me, you know, Darla, one of these things would be enough. One of these crises would be enough to bring a person to their knees. And you have multiple things going on, multiple crises going on. And I hadn't thought about it quite like that. And here's what I'll tell you. The way that I was able to be with all of these crises that were happening in my life is because of this experience that I created for myself. Because the truth is that I don't need Steve Hardison. You don't need Steve Hardison. What you need, what we need is to be with ourselves. We, when we identify that fear, that yes, it's very natural, it's ingrained, it's pre-programmed in us. And that doesn't mean that we are slaves to it. When we consistently work through this five-step process, and I'll share with you my experience, was that it has been... I was able to be with it in a different way. It didn't, it didn't mean bad things were happening. The crises were, you know, averted. It meant how I was. So simultaneously while these crises were happening, I was able to look at them sort of like from a witnessing perspective, from a watcher perspective, and really begin to glean while it was happening. What am I learning here? Yeah, this is a terrible thing. This is a terrible thing. And... What am I learning, right? That's powerful because so often it takes a long time. It takes retrospect to look back. You know, it says time will heal all things. What if we can simultaneously, while the horrible things are happening, what if we can, and I'm talking about, you know, consistently, and I'm not saying that I'm there 100%, none of us are. And what happens when we close that gap more and more and more? I'll tell you, it's been incredibly, incredibly powerful. Something has shifted inside of me in my relationships, in 
my business, in being with my kids, in being with everyone. And I'll tell you, I really wanted to share with you, you know, a practical way that you can do this, right? Something that I've been practicing, you know, that reminds me on the daily is that when I am out, it doesn't matter where I'm at, where I'm at. If I'm at Target, if I'm going through the line to pick up Chick-fil-A for my kids, right? I find a way to be the light and to bring in the light, right? We were talking about letting go of the darkness. And I do have some practical ways that you can do this. You can write down that fear. You can rip it up. You can throw it away. You can connect with your body and breathe it out and let it go. Find where that blockage is in your energetic body, in your physical body. You can breathe it out. And then you can imagine bringing in the light, breathing in light from the sun, from the stars, and filling up that empty hole where fear and anxiety used to be. And that's something that's simple and free and you can do in every breath. And another way that I bring in the light is just like I'm talking about at Chick-fil-A, you know, or anywhere else, I find a way to connect. Even if it's 10 seconds I'm in that line, I find a way to connect to that person, to send them love, to share love with them, to be with them, to see them as they truly are, right? Because that's what we were talking about at the beginning of this conversation. What did I get from my experience with Steve? Creating myself and creating others. And I do that all the time. Not 100% of the time. And the goal is to really be cognizant of it, is to be aware of it. When am I doing this? What is the impact? And what's opening up for me? I, I don't even know how to describe it to you. Yes, five-dimensional reality where I become the light even in the most horrible circumstances, you know, where I'm confronted with people who in the past, you know, would have really created struggle for me. Or I would have I would have created struggle and suffering from my interactions with them. Now I am able to just be the light. And the light doesn't get dissipated by darkness. The light actually dissipates the darkness. That's the truth. Both literally and metaphorically. That is the truth. And that's what I'm wanting for you. For you to become so powerful right? To become the sun, to become the light of the stars, that it doesn't matter what happens out there. It only matters what is shining from within. And that is profound. That creates impact. The moon doesn't, I'm air quoting, take light from the sun. The sun just shines. This is what I got in the last six months, this is where I'm at. I was so excited to share this with you and tell you that 2023 is already unimaginably blissful for me. And that's what I want for you. So if you're interested in hearing more about this or going deeper, or hearing about how you can incorporate this into your everyday life, make this applicable, really, truly feel free to reach out to me, drop a comment below, and I'd love to connect with you and hear how it's going for you. I'm excited that you joined me today. Thank you. I'm so grateful, and I look forward to hearing from you. Take care, and don't forget to subscribe below. Lots of love. Bye.